All right. Remember. Uh, remember to turn on your microphone. <laughs> remember you're a human being and you mess up, okay? Philippians chapter 4. There's a song about that. Remember. Remember I'm human. That's what, what it is. Sp speaking to God. Philippians 4, verse number 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. What's he saying? He's saying, remember all of these things because they are important. Now, there, one thing about these, he says, uh, all these things are good, truthful. These are things that are good things to remember, good things to think about. When we think about good more than evil, it's going to lead us into good. I think I mentioned it in one of the Sunday nights when we were talking about our brains, that uh, you are what you think. Okay, The more you think about bad things, the more bad you get. You pro Maybe some of you have. I, I remember being, uh, and Dave, you don't have to talk about it. Dave, I know the, I know the situation, but I've been, I was in a situation. Uh, I worked for a, a place. I'm not going to say what it was, but I worked for uh, different summers there. And the language of those people, just filthy. Okay, and, and as that, the, the longer you're in that, the more it gets and stays in your mind. And so we need to learn to think about good things and have that on our mind instead of bombarding our brains with bad, evil. Okay, um, so now let's go over to um, Genesis chapter 40, and this is what we want to look at and see what happened to Joseph. Uh, Jacob's son when he was in Egypt Genesis chapter 40 and we're going to start at verse number 5 let me give you a, a little bit of background Joseph was sold into, into slavery by his brothers and they said they sold him to a, to a man named Potiphar in Egypt um, and so he, he worked for him real for, for a while we don't know how long but his wife accused Joseph of something and he was put into prison okay he was he was not guilty so all the stuff that happened to Joseph was not his fault he did nothing to deserve being sold into slavery he did nothing to deserve being put into prison and now he's in prison and but God has given him uh, the ability uh, to interpret dreams okay so he interprets the dream of two men the butler and the baker look at verse 5 and they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. That's always thrown me. I don't get it. Uh, how many people are not sad in prison? And he says, why are you sad? I'm in prison. Well, it's more than that. He recognizes it. He sees it in their face. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me. And in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. And I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand, after the former manner when thou wast his butler. But think on me, when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me in the dungeon. 
And so here, uh, what we want to focus on is what Joseph's request was to the butler. And verse 14, he says, but think on me. That word think can be translated remember. So he says, now in the same verse, we'll see another word. It's also the, the same word translated in a different way. He says, remember me um, when you... Um, when it shall be well with thee. When you get taken out of prison and you go stand before Pharaoh, don't forget me. Don't forget what I have done for you. Don't forget that I'm, you know, think about it. Would the, would the butler think that um, Joseph is telling him something wrong about him being uh, stolen from the Hebrew land and, and being cast into prison for no reason? Here, he has interpreted a dream that came true. Wouldn't you think, well, he must have been telling me the truth about it. Okay, so he's telling him the truth, and I believe the butler recognized it. So he says, think on me, or remember me, when it shall be well, well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh. And here's the, here's the, the point we want to see today. The reason we remember remember what God wants us to remember, is so that we can do something. Okay? So here he says, he says, uh, make mention. Remember me to Pharaoh. Don't forget me to say something to him. Tell Pharaoh about me and the predicament I'm in. And so the butler was supposed to remember and do something. Okay? When he says, don't, or when he says, uh, think on me, it's, it reminds me of what people say today when somebody, uh, some bad thing happens, and they say, let's have a moment of silence and think about what has happened to these people. Okay, what's good is that? When you just think about it. What good was it to Joseph if the butler got out, everything is good for the butler, and he just thinks about Joseph? No, remember and do something. Put it into practice. We've talked so many a times about that. The reason we learn from Scripture is so we can put it into practice. And so when we remember something, even if it's just a, a remembrance of what happened to us sometimes, what are we going to do about that? We're going to think good thoughts. I'm so glad that... I, think about your vacation. Or, uh, well, uh, let me give you the example of Tom and Helene. Everything's burnt up. How many pictures do they have from their house? You know, there was a time when people didn't have pictures. But we can pick up a picture and look, look at it and, and see it. Well, now what, they, what do they have? They have the memories in their mind. They have their memories of their kids growing up. And to do something with that, even just to remember that, is doing something. Praising the Lord for what He has done in our lives. We should remember and do something about that. Go over to Colossians. Well, I don't have the, the reference. It's in, it's in the book of Colossians, okay? But Paul says to the Colossian Christians, he says, uh, remember my bonds. <laughs> now, uh, okay, he's in the stocks. I remember that. I remember he's in prison. Is that what he means? What do you think he means? He means, remember it, and pray for me. Remember the predicament I'm in. Even though you can't talk to a king, you can't talk to uh, 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 Caesar and get me out of prison, you can't talk to the high priest and get me out of prison. But he says, I know that my God is greater than any of them, and you can pray for me. And so here, when we remember something about somebody, probably, the, or I'd say the greatest thing we could do is to remember them and pray for them. Because God is going to be able to do something. Even though the world and the rulers might not be able to do something, we can pray for them and God can do it. Go over to 1 Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2, look at verse number 1. 
I'm going to have to find it there. I'm telling you where to go before I find it myself. I exhort. What does exhort mean? I encourage you. I'm telling you this is an important thing. I exhort you, therefore, uh, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. He goes on to talk about kings and everybody, but all men. We are to be praying for others, praying for one another. Here he's, he gives several different uh, words, and it's all about prayer, supplication, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks. It's all about talking to God, giving, of, giving thanks to God for what has happened, giving thanks to God for the friends you have, giving thanks to God for the enemies you have. Whoa, what? In everything, give thanks. Now, God, God has given us leaders, and even though sometimes those leaders go against our beliefs, God set them up. And we should thank God for the order that He's given to us in this country. Okay? Give thanks. Uh, pray for one another. Pray for others. The butler in, uh, uh, w that was... Uh, with Joseph there, he should have not just remembered Joseph and his condition, he should have done something about it. Butler got out of prison. But look down at verse number, go back to Genesis 40. And if we know the story, we know that the butler forgot Joseph, right? No, he didn't. Well, yes, he did, and no, he didn't. Okay? When you remember something, when you remember something that you want to remember and you want to keep in your mind, how do you, how do you store that information? You know, we got computers today and we know that, that it does something in that box. Our brains are computers and it does something up there in that <laughs> square, that cube. Um, we put it in a memory bank. Some, we can't do, we don't do it ourselves. We just think this is important, it's something I need to remember. Sometimes we, there are things that we should remember and we put it too far back and it forgets that we forget where it was. But we put it someplace where we can bring it easily to remember. I always remember something back when I was, th I think I was about three years old. And if my sister watches this video, she'll know what I'm, <laughs> she won't know what I'm talking about because she's, I must have been four because she's three years younger than I am. I was outside, we were, and I, my picture was way back up in the, in the hills, up in the Trinity Alps outside of, uh, uh, Fortuna area and uh, Eureka up there at a well doesn't matter and I was I was down on the ground doing something and from what I can remember she took a, a jar and it must have been a weak mayonnaise jar or something whatever it was she broke it over my head I remember I I, I, I know I, it happened but I just don't remember what all the details were but isn't it interesting that we can remember certain things? And, and we need to remember important things. And this butler should have not only remembered what happened, but remembered what he should have done. Now, it doesn't tell us that he made a promise to, to Joseph about uh, telling Pharaoh. But notice what he says. Verse number 23. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him, or he forgot him. Yes, he forgot, only for two years, okay. <laughs> he forgot what he was supposed to do, but he did remember, okay. Did Joseph get out of, out of prison? We know the story. Yes, he got out of prison, didn't he? Who got him out? Why did he get out? The butler did. You know, the, that's, is that where we get the butler did it? Or well, the butler didn't do it in this case. <laughs> Look at verse number 9 of chapter 41. All the way, for two years later, okay? Verse 9, Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember. But what does he remember? My faults, okay? <laughs> This is, this is closer to him now, okay? 
he remembers two years ago that he, he knew Joseph. Joseph did this wonderful thing for him. But I believe that what, when, what happened with, with this butler was that he got out of jail and he went back to where, work for Pharaoh. Pharaoh is the king of Egypt. Why was he in prison? Pharaoh got angry with him and threw him into prison. Now he's back working with a Pharaoh who threw him into prison. Do you think he's being more careful now about how he does things with the Pharaoh? I think his life just kind of got so busy being careful for the Pharaoh, it took his mind off of Joseph, took his mind off of what he should have done for Joseph. We get busy in our little box, our little world, and we forget about God sometimes. We forget that maybe I made a promise to God. Maybe I, I said, I'm going to do this. The Bible tells us, don't make a vow to God if you're not going to keep it. He says, if you make a vow, keep it. But, he says, it's better not to make it. <laughs> okay? But if you have said, I'm going to do this for the Lord, and you forget, and you get busy doing other things, that's a fault. This man was faulty, and he knew it. He saw it two years after what he should have done. Poor Joseph. We say poor, I say, you didn't say it. I say poor Joseph, but when we think about Joseph, do you think he was overly concerned? He didn't want to be in prison. But when you consider Joseph in prison, here's this man who was falsely accused. He was, he was um, uh, what do they say? Uh, uh, I can't think of the word now. But his brothers hated him, and they sold him. And, and uh, how would that make you feel, okay, if your family just said, I don't want you anymore? Well, we're going to make a profit off of you. We're going to sell you some, to somebody. I'm sure he felt bad about that. But, you know, I believe also that he remembered his God. He remembered that God is still good no matter what happened to his life. So for the two years that he was in prison after the butler got out, Joseph was content. Joseph still had his hope in the Lord. Joseph remembered God. He didn't remember, didn't think about, and dwell on his bad situation. I don't know if Joseph knew that two years later the Pharaoh was going to dream a dream. But I knew he knew his God. And he did not worry about it. And, and that might go back to what I said where, where he saw the, the countenance of these, the butler and the baker and he says, why are you sad? Maybe Joseph kept things light and happy in the prison even if people are in prison for no reason. God was able to work through him. Maybe. I mean, I know God did work through him and could work through him. I'm just saying, why could, did he notice that they were, had a sad countenance? Because normally they didn't look like that. Possibly because of God through Joseph. So he remembered his faults. We are not to forget to pray for one another. In 1 Samuel chapter 12, you don't have to... I, I hate saying that. You don't have to turn there. I'm not hiding anything from you. If you want to turn there, write it down and turn there later. Because this is what it says, okay? Samuel told the children of Israel, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. Sin against the Lord. If we, if we cease to pray for one another because we remember the needs that other people have, whether it's a, a, big, a big need or just uh, daily living, we should pray for one another. And Samuel recognized it as sin against the Lord if we don't pray for one another. When we get overtaken with de details in life, our duties, or responsibilities, sometimes we forget God. And we need to not forget God. Always remember. Last Wednesday night we talked about what it said uh, in Hebrews where it said, uh, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? And, and as I pointed out, it's not necessarily about unsaved people neglecting God and neglecting the, the salvation that He offers, but us. We know what God has done for us. He has given us new life through Jesus Christ. 
our faith in Jesus Christ has given us uh, the ability or God has <laughs> given birth to us again spiritually. And we are to not neglect. We are to remember what God has done for us in that salvation and be the servants that he wants us to be. To reach out to others, to tell others about Jesus Christ. But for the, the butler, you've probably heard this phrase. I think this is how it goes. Out of sight, out of mind. Did when, when the butler got out, I'm sure he was so excited. But as he got busy with his life, did he see Joseph? How many times, the Bible doesn't tell us, how many times did he go back to the prison to see Joseph? Probably zero, okay? And sometimes people say that's three. I like that's zero. Okay? Which maybe should go like this. <laughs> the butler didn't see Joseph. How many of you have ever seen God? How, I, I'm not going to wait for hands. I hope nobody raised their hand. How many of you have ever seen Jesus Christ in the flesh? Okay. The Bible tells us we walk by faith, not by sight. If we depended, if, if, if our godliness, if our service for the Lord depended on seeing Christ or seeing God, we would do nothing. Okay? But we see God by faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, even just because something is not seen does not mean it does not exist. I have never seen the wind. I've seen the evidence. I've seen the dust in the wind. But I have never seen the wind. I've never seen air. I don't think anybody else ever has. Okay? Do you believe it exists? Yes. I also believe God exists and God works in my life. Both because I've read the scripture and I've seen him work in my life. So we walk by faith and not by sight. Go over to 2 Corinthians. Now, when I, we, we look at this um, passage, we might think, or you might think, well, what does that have to do with what we're talking about remembering? Well, anytime we read Scripture, we should remember what it says, right? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, look at verse number 6. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. I know what God says. I know that when I die, my spirit goes to be with God. I know that, that that's what the, the Bible teaches, and Paul is saying that. He says we walk by faith. You don't see the afterlife. You don't see a person in heaven. You can't see all that, but you know what God has said. So he walked by faith, not by sight. Look at verse uh, 8. We are confident, I say, and willing rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, because of that, because of what I know about, about uh, uh, living this life now, uh, yes, I'm absent from the Lord in a, in a sense physically. I'm not in his presence that I can see him, one day I will. But he says, while I'm here, I'm absent from him. But if I'm no longer in this body, my spirit goes to be with him. Because of that, we labor. That whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. So we recognize that in this life right now, as I am serving the Lord, I should be serving, knowing that I will be accepted. Because of my faith, <laughs> not because I see anything. So the butler neglected what he was supposed to do because he didn't see Joseph. And because we don't see God sometimes, we neglect our service to him. We need to remember him, remember what he has done so that we can serve him. I think about a baby. <laughs> Have you ever, uh, you got a baby. I don't, know how, I, I don't know how old he is, but maybe he does it differently. Maybe he's old enough that he doesn't do this. But when a baby is born and begins to recognize you and interact with you, you can make it smile by or whatever, or playing peekaboo with him. 
as soon as they don't see you, you do not exist. They just go on about something else. Whatever that was, it, it just happened. So this butler is like, Joseph didn't exist. For two years, he did not exist. He was not in his remembrance. Out of sight, out of mind. But Paul says, we know that when we die, we're going to be with the Lord. That's a, that, that is a wonderful memory of God's promise to us as we think about that. Think about the people who have gone on before us. We know that they're with the Lord if they knew Christ as their Savior. And because we're still in this corruptible body, we can't see Christ. But we will be with Him when we die. Every day. Every day. You need to remember. How many of you need to remember to get up in the morning? <laughs> Sometimes you forget what day it is, maybe, because life's busy. But we get up. We need to remember others. We need to pray for them. Praise them. Compliment them. Say happy birthday to them when you need to. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm... But we do need to remember. I knew somebody one time that would not thank people for what they did because you're not supposed to do it for thank yous. No, you're not supposed to do it for thank yous, but it's my responsibility to thank you my responsibility to praise you for your help. By the way, thank you, Amy and Owen. You're all sitting on chairs that were had puddles in them this morning. Okay? <laughs> By the time you got here, Amy and Owen had dried off the, the chairs. And so you don't have to be in a wet seat. Uh, the, I don't know what's wrong. It doesn't matter. It sprinkled last night. The water the lawn and watered the chairs. Okay? But uh, thank you, Amy. I appreciate it. I thank people for picking up the chairs and putting the, putting the books out, the song books. This time of our church is weird, right? Because of this COVID-19 thing. But it should not take away from our appreciation for what people are doing. Don't be so concerned with the masks and, the, and going into the stores and everything and making sure everything's okay that you can't take time to thank people and pray for them. We need to remember to th other people. We need to remember God's commandments. Why do we need to remember God's commandments and God's instructions? So that we can do them. But be doers of the word, not hearers only. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 12. Solomon in, in the book of Ecclesiastes said the conclusion of the whole matter is to fear God and keep His commandments. Samuel gives us a, a, another reason. To praise the Lord. To serve Him. 1 Samuel chapter 12. Look at verse number 24. He says, Only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth with all your heart. Now, does he say remember here? No, he doesn't use the word remember. He doesn't use the word think. doesn't use the word make mention. But he does say consider. Consider how great things he hath done for you. Now, notice he, he says, Fear the Lord, serve him in truth with all your heart. For, because of what you know about God, because of what you remember about God, consider how great things he hath done for you. And the greatest thing God has ever done for us is given us eternal life. He has given us Jesus Christ. He gave Jesus to die for us. We're to remember what He has done in providing salvation. Remember what uh, He has done in our lives. Remember that He doesn't remember something. He doesn't remember. Now, yes, I know, and I have to say this almost every time. Yes, God, nothing, God can't forget, okay, because He's infinite, right? And, and he, but, but remember, He forgets this, in a sense. He forgets our iniquities. He forgets our sins. Let me read Hebrews 10, 16, and 17. This is the covenant. He's quoting Old Testament Scripture. 
This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Okay, he said it himself. What he's saying, I will never bring it up to you. When God forgives, we talk about forgive and forget. God forgives and you can count on it. He's never going to remind you of it. He's not going to bring it back to your remembrance. And you think, wait a minute, I remember all the things I did sin. I remember the bad things and I, I, it, it bothers me. Okay, if it bothers you, listen to the evening message, okay? All right, we're, we're talking about the precious jewels of God. He considers you and me precious, okay? And we think of our sin. He doesn't want us to remember that because he's not going to bring it up. When you remember your sin, there's two, ways you, two reasons you remember it. Because you do it or Satan brings it to your memory. God never, ever brings it up unless you haven't confessed it. If you haven't confessed it, God may bring it up to your memory, then confess it. Once you confess it, forget it, because God's done that. God has wiped it off, off of the, his memory. He, it, the Bible says, as deep as, uh, he cast it into the depths of the deepest sea. 7,000 feet deep, if you want to go down there and look for him. But uh, and he also says, as far as the east is from the west. God does not remind you of your sin. He says, I will remember them no more. And that happens when we put our faith in Jesus Christ. Faith in Christ wipes away our sin. And it wipes it away from God's memory. We are to remember that. Remember that God forgets our sin. God considers us His children. You know, we as parents are faulty sometimes. Most of the time. No, I shouldn't say most of the time. Sometimes. Reminding our kids, you did that yesterday, well, did you spank him for it? Did you get after him for it? Yeah. Well, don't remind him about it. If you took care of it, leave him alone. Yes, maybe they're doing the same thing, but you just have to keep correcting, okay? You know what God does with us? He keeps correcting. He doesn't look back and say, you did that yesterday. Why are you coming to me with that? Look at the book of James, James chapter 1. He says, he, he um, upbraideth not. I can keep coming to him for the same thing over and over and over. But he never gets after me. Yes, he'll chasten me to bring me back to him. But he doesn't get after me for coming for the same thing. Because that's past. It's over. And we have new life to go forward. Paul says, putting the past behind, I press toward the mark of the uh, high calling of God. We need to remember what God has done for us. We need to serve him because of it. That's what remembering is all about. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love for us. Thank you for the forgiveness of sin. Thank you for what you've done in Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to remember. I know that we take the time in the communion service, the Lord's Supper, in remembrance of him. Remembering the Lord's death till he returns. And Lord, you've given us that ordinance given us the ordinance of baptism to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And so many times you gave the Jews feasts and holidays for remembering certain things. Lord, you want us to remember. So help us to remember to serve you, to remember the great things you've done for us. Remember to pray for one another. Remember to praise one another. Lord, help us to remember. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's all stand. Turn to number 378. 378. Under His Wings. Under his wings I am safely abiding, though the night deepens and tempests are wild. Still I can trust him, I know he will keep me. He has redeemed me and I am his child. 
Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever? Under his wings my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for being with us. We thank you for taking care of us. Lord, there's so many things in our lives that we can praise you for. Uh, help us to remember uh, the good that you bring. Remember to uh, set aside the bad that comes. Lord, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for everyone who come and came today. Pray for your guidance in our lives this afternoon. I pray in Jesus' name.